so friendly. I tell you what guys, I am over the top excited today. Of course, this is Bubba, the Yate Lychee at Steve's Place at Leaping Lychees. I've been following him on Instagram forever. Has some of the most amazing, I was really, what I think is the best collection of lychees in the world, in particular locality. So today, we're gonna have some really good time. Look at the amazing animal is. He has so much cool stuff and we're gonna learn a lot because I'll be honest with you, I don't know all that much about this stuff. So uh, we're gonna have a good time and uh, see some of the most giant geckos on the planet. I'm here with the man, the legend, Steve. First off, thank you so much for having me. Oh, no this problem. place is ridiculous. I thought it was gonna be awesome. It's like times 10 awesome, so this is amazing. <laughs> so of course you guys met Bubba here. Tell me a little bit about Bubba. We're about to get educated on lychees. Bubba's a Yate locale, GT Lychianus. They're kind of known for their bulk and size and they come from the Yate region. When you say GT, can you explain what you mean by that? Sure, GT is uh, Grand Terre. It's the main island of New Caledonia. Okay, and that's where these guys are found. Yep. And obviously being the biggest kind of one talked a little bit about like size compared to, to weight they're one of the most bulky of the lychees some of them can get to a really long size but they definitely put on a lot of bulk too. definitely going to be adding some of these from Steve's collection on our place because I mean come on who doesn't want a bubba right so uh, but again we're gonna learn about a bunch of different localities and I'm gonna be honest with you we're gonna be learning together because I know virtually nothing about these other than they're absolutely awesome but these are Mount Kogus lychianus also a GT form this is the original pair that uh, Michael Trugger owned this is a melanistic version and a non-melanistic version. When you say melanistic, is that like a polygenically bred thing or is it something that's recessive? Or, or it's is a simple, it's so far we see it's simple recessive. Simple recessive, yeah. okay. The difference is you can see that they're melanistic when they hatch. They hatch black. Oh, they hatch black. I talked earlier about this just kind of being a hobby that kind of goes crazy. I know that happens with a lot of people, right? Like, I mean, so you started yeah, keeping absolutely. some lychees and then what was the next step to this, you know? Well, I just, it was like an obsession. I had to have every form. And yeah. once I did, and then you of course start producing babies and you, yeah. oh, I can't let that one go. I can't let that one go. You end up with a million. <laughs> you know? This was one of the babies from the pair that you just showed, Correct, right? Yeah. And oh, this wow. one hatched out black. He's not quite fired up. He does get really dark at night with the yellow, of course, which is a nice contrast. One of the things I'm already noticing is the fact that the body structure of these animals can be so differently. This is much longer and more mm -hmm. slender looking, exactly. whereas obviously Bubba is much more robust. It's interesting. So what do we have here? So this is Pointy Mie, my friend Charlie's gecko that he, uh, he bought from me a long time ago and gave me back for breeding purposes. Um, they get real jet black and real long and lean. For people that are thinking maybe that they want these giant geckos because they really are cool, I mean, what's the advice? I mean, you know, is there like entry level gecko? Is there? Absolutely, you know, everybody sees the big ones and go, oh my God, I have to have that large gecko. And the prices on the large ones are much higher. You can get a perfectly fine giant gecko for a very inexpensive price. It doesn't necessarily have to be the giant form. It's still gonna impress your friends. It's still gonna be a big giant gecko. You know, these aren't unobtainable if you wanna get into a pet, you know, and kind of work your way up to the more interesting line. So, uh, and Steve works with the entry level all the way up to the most rare stuff. So these guys are incredible. Oh my God. Gosh, that thing is ridiculous. Which, what exact locality is this one? So this is green pointy mie. This oh, was a pair that um, I was given uh, with the name pointy mie. That was green, so I just. So this is the same as locality as the other one. Just correct. This is the green it's said a green to be. Version. Yep, gotcha. said to be. Holy cow. And as you were taking this one out, I couldn't help but notice a little vocalization. Yeah. That's one of the things that's amazing about these, right? Yeah. Some of the big GT forms are not the friendliest forms. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. But, uh, Especially in the cage. They can be very in the territorial. Cage, when, when you get it out, you can see it's actually, you know, puppy dog tame. But that noise, I mean, that is crazy to hear a gecko make that sound. That I'm sure we'll amazing. get to hear some of that in the videos. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Beautiful. And once again, it's pretty amazing, Steve, just the kind of uh, variety that these guys have, you know? And, and that's that all based in locality or is it gene pool as well? It's of course different localities. There's yeah. This is Goro. So what is the size differences from these localities? T localities have potential of course to be the largest. And the okay, heaviest. so all the GTs? All the GTs. Some are larger than others, some are bulkier than others. You know, Gosh. and again diet has a lot to do with that. If you overfeed one, of course you can get any of these guys pretty heavy. If you feed them uh, lots of fattening foods, they will bulk up and of course have weight. To me, I like a real nice, you know, nicely built long gecko. I know you said that insects might make a slightly longer gecko that isn't as bulky. It Is seems, that it seems that with my experience that animals that have been fed lots of insects do gain a lot of length in the early years of growth. Insect protein going in makes them grow a lot quicker. The Goro locale is a darker form uh, with the bands on the side, and uh, a lot of them have the stripes on the back. Not all, of course, it's, it's easy to see in babies. Once again, guys, uh, these things are ridiculous. I mean, they literally don't even seem real, dude. I mean, like, this 
can't really be on our planet. This yeah, comes from there the it is. Earth. So which, <laughs> which locality is this? So this is Mount Humboldt, another Grand Terra form. Humboldt's are, are uh, pretty pretty similar form to Yate, I guess. Some of the animals, uh, most of the females, have bars on the side as they grow. They seem to fade over time, so you can kind of see the vanishing bars that's sort of still there, and as the get, animal gets older and older, it kind of closes up and just becomes a dot or a small bar. You talk about GT, which mm -hmm. is the main island. Yep, Gran Terra. Yep. Gran Terra. And then there's lychees from other islands, though, as well. Absolutely. So, so Gran Terra is the big elongated island, right. and then towards the southeast, I guess, would be Pine Island, which is a, a good size island, and then there are all these other little satellite islands, which is where all the other insular forms come from. Okay, so some of the localities can still come from GT. Correct. Yep, and Grand then Terra. there's other island localities. As Correct. Well. So Grand Terra, of course, um, you hear Yate. It's down near the bottom. Um, Pointe Mie is up near the center, east coast. Mount Kogus, Mount Dore are down near the bottom also, one of the southern blotched areas. Now, has there been any like recent expeditions there? I know they haven't been collecting there them. There are a lot of people that still go. I went once with Frank and we had a hard time finding any. It's, really? it, it can be very challenging. The trees are very big. There are some people that are extremely lucky. It also depends on when you go. If you go in the right season, you're gonna see animals. If you go in the wrong season, they're gone. I've flown over New Caledonia. That's a long trip to go and not find anything. Yeah, it was. You know, but we got to see the country. It was beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. it's a beautiful, country. Yeah, beautiful. surreal country. Yeah. We got to see a lot of cool stuff, and That's it was a great right. time with a good friend. Ooh, doggy! This is one beautiful lizard. Oh my gosh! So this is uh, again a mainland. Yes, it's another a, another Grand Terra locale. This is uh, Mount Dore, which is uh, known kind of for the, the real crisp bars. I would say, as far as Type B is concerned, which is a name that was given to to try to group them, I would say this is a good example of a southern blotched. Form. Let's back up a second. Type B. I heard you say Type so C a little earlier. At one point, there were they were named with the types. Uh, Philippe came up with a way to try to try to group them. I guess kind of like dog breeds. Okay. You know, so he had named the Type A's, which were the long, lean animals that were mostly patternless. Type B's being uh, animals that had lots of pattern that were kind of shorter forms. And then Type C was, of course, supposed to be the the real long form that had very hot, uh, heavy pattern. Interesting. Yeah. These are Pine Island uh, Lechianus. It's the largest insular form. Males have very bulky, broad heads, and of course they have real vivid, bright bars. Very clean bars, typically, not a lot of peppering. Obviously, the, all the lychees have this kind of weird tail where it almost looks like it's regen. Absolutely, but yeah. But this yeah. one actually is a regen. This is what a regen would look like, yep. It just takes away all the pattern on it. Yeah, they all have that fold, which makes them look like it's a spot where they drop the tail and it yeah. regrew, but that's just there. So you were mentioning the field collecting of these were really like kind of mid-90s era. Correct. So, yeah, And you actually yeah. have a pair that's from the field? Yes, these are a pair of field collectors. Collected Moreau, collected by Frank Fast. Moreau animals, uh, they're kind of known for having these, these dark black lines with also the heavily reticulated iris. And if you look at the nose from this angle, it's very square. Okay. So you can see a very square nose. This is actually a captive one from the same locality? Correct, yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so I kind of get the difference. What am I looking for as far as differences that you'll see between the field collectors and captives mainly? Field collected animals have a tendency to be darker. Uh, this one's pretty pretty light with a lot of color and pattern, but usually they're a little bit darker. It seems that the F1 generation shows a lot more color and pattern. And then now, most of these will all come in with regen tails too? A lot of them do. In the wild, God, they beat each other up. So you can see even both of these have regenerated tails. Males are just fighting over females, fighting over territory. They're just brutal with each other. And that brings up a good question. I mean, you guys, how do you keep these in pairs or how do you keep them? Yeah, mostly in pairs as long as they get along. If they okay. start to argue and you see, you know, scars or bites, you separate them out and try again later or try a different pairing. Okay. Sometimes they can get, get along for a long time and then the next thing you know, they're just going at it. He forgot to take out the garbage or something and that's it. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> now are these adults here? These are adults, yep. Okay, so what's happening is like what the GTs are usually bigger. Much bigger, yeah. And then the, the more insular islands become small. smaller and yep. smaller. Yep. So which ones are these? These are bayonets. Bayonets is known for having like some nice pink watching. Now what's the typical, I mean, what's the longevity of a lychee typically? Well, there are some animals thought to be in their 40s, late 40s. Someone once said, someone in Germany said they think they can hit the 50s. There's some people there, of course, who collected way before any of us. So they wow. would have a little bit more 
experience about about that, but for sure, way over 30. Wow. I've got animals over 30 that are producing. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's amazing. I'm here with my good friends, Ben and Ryan from R&B Reptile. They really helped me out with this whole journey here between Steve and everything with the animals for the collabs I'm doing, so thank you guys. But I am excited to tell you that if you guys are into blue tongue skinks like I certainly am, these guys have some really amazing blue tongue skinks. And the reason I'm telling you that is because you may have an opportunity to get one of them. Tell me what you guys are doing. So we're just trying to get some people to know who we are and stuff and we like blue tongue skinks and we think that people really would enjoy them as a pet. We feel like they're almost like the puppy dog of the lizard world and they're kind of easy to maintain and take care of. So we wanted to share our passion with them by giving one away. So here's an Eastern blue tongue skink. We're gonna be giving this, this little guy or girl away. And so if you would like to participate in that, here's an opportunity to get into it for free. All you'll have to do is go to our page and you'll have to subscribe to our channel as well as comment in the comments below. And we're gonna draw from people that comment. We're gonna go over to their page. I'm gonna have a link in the description. Go ahead, subscribe to them. Do a comment. They're gonna use a random comment generator so uh, you guys can win. Yep. And on May 1st, they're gonna be doing that drawing and you could potentially win this absolutely beautiful skink. Oh, and by the way, they're gonna have some other giveaways ways here in yeah. another few weeks after that. So definitely go show those guys some love. These are Bross locality, um, which originally were known as the Striped Neck locality. This is a field collected and you can see how they earned that name because the, the band is kind of at a diagonal. When it comes to colors like this, I mean, you're doing a lot of selective breeding for certain things. To a certain extent, yeah. I'll take sometimes something with a lot of color and something with a lot of pattern, put them together and hope to get something with a lot of color and pattern. Yeah, well, you're doing a good job. Thank you. Yeah. We're on locality, I don't know, eight or nine, something like that now. And the reason I really, really appreciate the fact that Steve was allowing us to come and do this is that I've never really seen much on the localities of these. So I figured that we'd come to the person that probably knows more than anyone that's working with these guys and actually see them. So I hope that you guys are enjoying and appreciate the fact that he's opened this up to us. So thank you for that. Right, what do we have here? These are Nuana locality, and this is a field collected female. It's kind of the standard Look on a Nuana, of course, short and stumpy, short snout, nice coloration on it. This is a one that's bred for color, of course, which is a pink Nuana. This is an F2. F2? Only. Yeah, two unrelated F1s that showed a lot of color and pattern, and I put them together and wow, there it is. Wow. That yeah. was a good choice. Yeah, thanks. Getting down to the last couple localities here. Now, which ones are these? These are Nuami, which were uh, which were named by Felipe Frank as the Mossy Lichianus. The blotches kind of blend into the background and gives them kind of a mossy appearance. A lot of the older animals will have uh, yellow and black polka dots. These are Kanawa. Gosh, and this, they're unbelievable. Yeah. And they do actually have that like purplish tinge to them, right? Absolutely, yeah. The, the Kanawa to me are the ones that truly show purple in a pure locality. Wow. And you can see the fired up and fired down right there. So which one would you considered fired up? That's this is fired up. That's fired and that's up fired and that's down. fired down. Yep. All right. These are Duana. They're known, of course, at one point Philippe had claimed maybe they eat crabs on the island because there are very few fruit trees. Definitely thought to possibly be extinct in the wild also. Oh, so these ones are thought to be extinct? Possibly. possibly. It's hard to say. No, I don't know if anybody's gone back to see if they're still there or not. Oh my gosh. And this crazy. one here had uh, one, of its, one of its legs amputated way back when and uh, she still produces sometimes. Uh, it's definitely a locale that we're trying to save in, in captivity, but they haven't been awfully prolific. They've oh been a little gosh, difficult. That's, well, that's an absolutely great way to kind of end. I mean, I tell you what, I'm going to absorb so much of this. I'll be watching this video probably 10 times because I want to hear what he has to say about all these things. It's pretty amazing. Again, very seldom am I kind of in awe. And today I'm in awe, not only of your knowledge and your localities, but your entire setup is unbelievable. As always, guys, I'm putting the links in all the descriptions. Go show him some love, follow him, tell him I sent you and stuff like that. Steve, thank you so much, no, dude. No problem. Thank this you. was absolutely amazing. And as for now, guys, I'm going to just end the vlog because I need to absorb this all right have a wonderful day i love you guys be kind to someone i'll see you tomorrow